and soon to be unfortunately uh mocked and crucified right yeah i think that's i think that's kind of where we left off that's uh we're so yeah good job man that's where we're at i'm usually bad with the reviews usually Bryn is the one that kills it what's up Bryn? hey brother it's been too long man how you been dude catch us up real good. quick i've been good how about yourself been good you sound sick dude I'm tired, dude. I just got home from Chicago. I went and played a show. Uh huh. Um, yeah, and I went to bed at like half past two. Got up, flew, but yeah, but uh, still want to swing by and for sure enjoy a chat with you guys. For sure, appreciate you for coming in, man. I know, I know you're probably tired, but I bet you probably feel good too, just from the work, huh? Yeah, I love work, dude. <laughs> yeah, I get depressed if I don't work. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm slowly learning that here. Yeah. All right. What are you talking about, dude? You're one of the most disciplined people I know. Shut the flip up. No, no, that's all a facade, bro. I I, I have my bad days. <laughs> no. Day. But yeah, that was a that was a huge lesson from last week too. Uh just coming to the terms as far as you know, I, I'm usually the happiest when I'm doing doing more of the hard, the harder, the harder path, the harder routes. Um it honestly I, i've gotten over that so it feels good just kind of submitting to that as far as god's god's path for us as men are, is not necessarily the easiest you know um but it is very sovereign as alec would like to say that we we spoke a lot about last weekend so it's it's, it's nice to know but yeah. let's see let's see let's see where the script takes us tonight i'm gonna start off on john 19 all right jesus sentenced to be crucified then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and they slapped him in the face. Once more, Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, here is the man. As soon as the chief priest and their officials saw him, they shouted, crucify, crucify. But Pilate answered, you take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. One second, just for context, does anybody know um, who, I keep saying Pilate, it may be wrong, but who is this Pilate guy and what's his context? Say that again. And the pilot, the judge of the Jews. Pilot, pilot, literally pilot. Okay, and he's what? Say that again. Kind of low. Judge of the Jews. Okay, I heard a little bit, bro. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna be honest, bro. I, I can't hear what he's saying right now. Okay, am I, am I, I, I can't be the only one here. Am I cutting out? Okay, you sound good now. That's, oh, that's so much better. Okay, I just need to speak louder. I'm tired. <laughs> he's the judge of the Jews. Okay, so he's the judge of the Jews. He's a judge. Yes, okay. that is correct. Okay, I was kind of I was reading it, but I wasn't following. Hmm. The Jewish leaders insisted, "We have a law, and according to that law, he must die because he claimed to be the Son of God." When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid, and he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from? He asked Jesus, but Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? Pilate said, don't you realize I have power either to free you or to crucify you? Jesus answered, you would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jewish leaders kept shouting, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. Okay, there's a lot going on right there. So, can anybody give us a little bit of context behind, um, I want to say, the perspective in which, um, you know, the judge Pilate is coming from as far as they're representing what are what are they kind of truly representing here? Because I know we had the Roman Empire at the time and things of that nature, but what perspective are they speaking from here? I mean, he's representing the potential to be able to kill people, and so he's used to feeling a large amount of power. 
Right. Then whenever he talks to someone, giving them an opportunity to, to get out of their punishment, he's used to people trying to cling on to that. So it, it must be a really strange experience because Jesus is literally just ignoring him as though it made no effect to talk to him and beg for his life. Right. So it's a very, so he must be very, very confused. It's a really weird power dynamic. He doesn't really understand who Jesus is. But then when Jesus speaks, the way Jesus speaks and what he says, there's a certain type of authority with it that, you know, makes him change his mind about, about what's going on. And he ends up wanting to save Jesus. Right. But the tonality. Thank yeah, who, somebody, I heard somebody. Give it to me. It's Lorenzo. What's up, bro? Talk to us. So what I know is Pilate's the governor uh -huh. of that region, right? So pretty much everyone has to go through him because back then, uh, Roman Empire took over that area. So he's pretty much the head person over them. Uh, so kind of like the judge, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if we know the context, but his wife had a vision saying, um, don't kill Jesus or like, don't, don't touch him. I don't know if y'all read that yet or if that's in a different. I've, I've yeah. never read it, but, but, but it sounds about right. <laughs> it's a different book. Yeah. Different book. I okay. don't know. Mark or whatever, but pretty okay. much like, um, what's really cool and you should definitely check it out. I have Matthew up, so I was trying to keep track of it too, but yeah. I don't think it's in Matthew either, but pretty much when Pilate knows there's something about this man, because we're about to read where he's like, my hands are clean, um, because he kind of he knows that there's something different about this guy, especially when your wife has a whole vision about him, and right. uh, so... I think that's definitely some underlying things going on with his conscience probably feels dirty or feels like there's something deeper going on. Right. That's huge to add to the story there. Um, as far as um, understanding that that context is really huge, important as far as his wife having that vision and that pilot is actually aware of this vision that his wife's having. Mm -hmm. I know you guys kind of spoiled, spoil it a, a little bit there, but considering i'm guessing he he doesn't necessarily he's still kind of he's still he's not sold on the fact of this is the guy we're, we're, we're taking here um which is is this like i said this is totally new to me um but it, it's kind of cool there what i did want to before we move past here what i did want to really point out i know we speak a lot in here about um jesus's disciples and their tonality and their approach to when it comes to jesus's word but the the certainty and the calmness here in Jesus's answers and his tonality is very like Bryn was kind of saying it's is so powerful knowing that Jesus knows his time's coming and the one of the biggest fears I don't know about you guys but one of the biggest fears that I still kind of you know think about at times the time is that that concept of death you know um the lack of fear here in Jesus's tone and the lack of like worry here it is I just wanted to point that out as far as how powerful that um, verse 11 right there is as far as, you know, you have no power over me. If it was not given to you from above, therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of greater sin. I mean, yeah, he just crushes Pilate's frame. Pilate has like a frame and perspective. And um, Jesus, by his answer, just like completely dumbfounds him, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm, I'll, I'm curious about something. So yeah. this is a little weird. Um, it says, you would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Uh -huh. Then the next part is weird. It's a weird transition. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. I don't see how those two go together. Right. Right. Who, who handed you? You know what I'm saying? It doesn't really, like, God gave everyone the power. Therefore... Whoever handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. That doesn't make that doesn't seem like a logical transition to me. I don't really understand what he means. Well, is he is he trying to say like whoever captured me and then gave me over to you for you to decide if I can be crucified? 
Or, they have a greater sin. Or are oh, we back? okay. Okay. So, yeah, that could be it. It could be like, okay, the uh, the power to do um, things is granted by my father. So how dare this person um, in their pride kind of grab power that's not theirs and, and hand me over? Maybe that's kind of what it is. Right. I don't know, though. I don't know, though. Who are we talking about when he said, okay, are we going back to Judah there? Like, who's he actually referencing here, though? Who's the one who handed him over? I mean, you could say either Satan. The Pharisees or... handed him over. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's speaking towards, because, you know, we see in Exodus where God hardens Pharaoh's heart, right? Um, and God will harden people's heart to to glorify himself or to fulfill his plan, right? So I think he's kind of speaking to that, to where... Um, you're being you're just a tool right i think he's saying well you're just a tool man you know um and this greater sin is is to the pharisees but to you you're just a tool they, like because uh pilate's not a jewish person he's a roman official right so he has no basis to kill him so it's basically like you know he's like dude i know you're innocent but you Don't need to tell. tell tell me something to give me justification to right. let you go cuz the pharisees are at, at asking me to kill you and they actually just like allowed me to release a murderer in right. in exchange for you right so like he's <laughs> like bro give me something here and he's like man you're just a tool you know right. i think it's that type of dynamic going on and he's he's kind of like you know um clowning on the pharisees a little bit with Doesn't that the, second part the, doesn't the Barabbas thing happen after this a little bit? Already, I thought it already happened. What's Maybe that? it did. I thought we talked about that in 18. I thought we, we did. talked about that in 18. Well, I, I probably wasn't here, so that probably doesn't help. But um, yeah, yeah, okay. So so what it could be is is God gives power to people, and the Pharisees were given their positions of power. So if they use their positions of power to do something against God, that's quite a part of hefty sin they have power because of god and then they're going against god right but at the same time um when we when we lead up to 19 we already kind of see that that whole concept as far as everything must be fulfilled uh for for god's needs you know we understand that jesus must has to become crucified you know what i'm trying to say i don't know mm. if i'm going off on a tangent here but as far as you, you that concept that alec and you guys are talking about as far as you're just a tool Right. Because God already knows exactly what 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 must happen. Um, and I think that's that that's an important piece as far as. Um, uh, and then when we go back to like Bible studies before, as far as uh, one of the really huge lessons that we learned from the book of Job was that even through sin and even through the devil, that is that the devil's power still um comes from god you know what i'm trying to say like yeah. god is the ultimately the one who gives the devil power in our lives um if if that makes sense are, are we on that same page there or not necessarily yes. that uh, yes. throwback to job that's a Absolutely. throwback to job as far as how the devil was working in his life but it was only coming from the test of of god's power um and i think that's huge to understand here too when you understand that um that concept as far as you're still only doing God's work, even if it is through a, a perspective of sin, because God is ultimately allowing you to do that. And I think that's that, that, that was huge. That, that was coming to my brain. I don't know. Well, yeah, you got like in Romans, it talks about some pots are made for destruction and some are made for good. And it's not for us to determine why. Right. So God is God. Right. So, so like, like he used Pharaoh, he hardened his heart. Yeah. to show his glory right and during the exodus um god will do, god is you know some could say he might have done that you know he's doing that here i think jesus is kind of speaking to that type of tonality right i don't know specifically that's happening right here right but it's that G he's speaking from a godly perspective of you're just a tool in this plan because jesus knows what the plan is he knows he must go to the cross and he must be crucified right so pilate's trying to give him a way out and jesus is like nah dog i gotta go i mean yeah but he asked him like three different questions before jesus even answered him once and he yeah. didn't even like say like i'm innocent nah he said you have no power over me yeah it was not given from above like that's oh my gosh that's a bar that's a bar <laughs> that's a bar for the week i'm sorry i gotta highlight that one but um 
but yeah, and right there before uh, before we end with Alec, we learned that a little bit too, as far as Judas's um path. Um, we we went di we went down that rabbit hole last week, so I don't, I don't think we necessarily should do it again. But as far as that whole concept, as far as uh, pre predestiny and things of that nature, as far as we're just tools here, and like Alex said, we do have to understand that some pots are bad pots and some pots are good pots, and I think it's a scary concept too, though. I still think it's a scary con concept from that perspective. But I know GB kind of pointed it out too, as far as um. GB, I don't want to speak for you, but did you feel like Judas still had a choice there as far as he knew? Do you feel like Judas still had a choice there? Like, I see Lorenzo shaking his head. Lorenzo, talk to me. Do you feel like Judas had a choice here when it came to betraying Jesus? Sorry, GB. You good. I, I will only say, yes, he had a choice because uh, it says the devil entered Judas. So there was a moment before he could have not done it i think he went to the pharisees or something and then when he did that's when the devil entered him and that was his choice to what what the devil and and that's how we ended up here you know okay so okay well hey just to i just hey, like i just want to make sure we're staying so the devil entered uh judas after that he after he dipped the bread and uh jesus gave him the piece of bread at the last the supper and that's when the devil entered him and then jesus told him oh, go go do what you're gonna do no it's all good it's a bible study man <laughs> um uh and then jesus told him go do what you're gonna do and do it quickly right yeah yeah so I okay but, that's, hey, but jesus gave him the bread so where where you at alec where you at jesus um, gave him the bread because he knew that he would betray Jesus. Now, I think what we have to remember, I, I I really do think that letting the devil into your spirits to possess you is an act of will, you know, whether it's, you know, a, an omission of sin by not like doing something to prevent that, or it's an omission of saying, yeah, uh, of action saying, please do that. But you have to remember in Genesis, when the serpent was punished, I think a lot of the punishment was for letting the devil control it. You know, the devil went into a serpent and um, made it do his bidding, and the serpent got punished. The serpent wasn't just punished. Uh, the serpent wouldn't have been punished unjustly. It had part to play in what Satan did through it. Okay, so do you feel like Judas had a choice here to betray Jesus? Yes. I'll get my answer first. I'm saying no. I'm going to put it in the chat. Oh. I wow. feel like he didn't have a choice here. Wow. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's the first. I'm sorry. But think about his guilt, though, Malik. Like, hey. later on in, in you know, after these Gospels, when he um, his guilt drives him to throw away all the silver, and he goes and, what does he do? He hangs himself and then falls out and falls on some rocks and his guts spill out mm -hmm. that that was guilt that was guilt from knowing that he had betrayed jesus and when jesus dipped the bread into the, the thing he didn't say um this man will will have satan take over him and and satan will do something to jesus no he said this whoever puts their hand here and with the bread will betray me. He said that G Judas was the one betraying him when they did the bread thing. Yeah. And he, Jesus gave Judas the bread, which meant Judas was now the one who was going to betray Jesus. Well, but Jesus was prophesying that. though. Don't you think, well, I, I think that Jesus was foreseeing the future as God often does right. rather than saying, Oh, please, would you be the one that betrays me? He wasn't, I don't think he was making him betray him. And yeah. Judas was known to help himself to some of the money because he was the, the one that took care of the money. So he had a degree of sin in himself already, a degree of greed. And that's why he traded Jesus over for a bunch of silver. Right. But that but that ultimately was coming from God because Jesus was just spreading the message back to the people from God, which was ultimately the only way that the um that this could be. I don't even know how to say it, but the only way that Jesus could ultimately be crucified is because God needed Jesus to be crucified to spread the word of God. 
the only way that could happen was that they had to coming back to this point right here is how we are all just tools in this story. They Jesus Jesus then gave it to Judas. Like I don't feel like leading up to that point, I got any context as far as how Judas had the choice of making ultimately betraying him. I don't know. Because what if he didn't? What if he made the choice of, oh, I'm not going to betray him? Then the whole thing that God needed to be fulfilled wouldn't have been fulfilled unless they chose well, somebody else. It's my mindset. Well, God would put Jesus in, in the right type of circumstances where he knew that what was going to happen was the correct thing that was going to happen. That doesn't mean that he controlled every ounce of it. You know, there's a, I think there's a, and you know, you can tell me if you disagree with this, but I think that that there's a strong difference between uh, knowing that something is going to happen and being the one that makes that happen. Just because you prophesy of something doesn't mean that you're the one or that God's the one that is creating that will or that intent in someone's hearts. It's like if God says, okay, I know that Adam and Eve will uh, sin against me, that doesn't mean that he made the choice for them. He just knew that they were going to do that. That's a fair, that is a fair statement there. I see the separation there between the the knowing and the action. Hmm. Right? And I, it's it's implicit. And um I'm curious as to what you think about this. But when I read about Judas, it seems to me that it's implicit that he is guilty and should be guilty, that he has committed some sort of grave sin and Nobody thinks of Judas as sort of an innocent player. He's always looked at as, as a betrayer himself. He's not looked at as an instrument of betrayal, although he partially is. But mainly when people think of a Judas, they think of a, someone who betrays someone else or stabs someone in the back. Right. But it, imagine if Judas did it. You know, yeah. like imagine then he would be one of the other disciples, you know, um, and. I think that there would be another disciple that would have to carry out the will. Right. But later in the Bible, we see the, um, we see the, I guess you, I don't want, I don't, <clears throat> not perfect here, but I feel like we see the effects of Jesus's resurrection, right? We see the positives that come from Jesus ultimately being crucified. If you look at it from that perspective, you could kind of take a positive perspective from Judas actually fulfilling that, um, right? Or am I wrong? Because I feel like that, uh, yeah. I just feel like it wasn't his intent. I feel like because that wasn't his intent to do that, that I feel like when it's tied to Judas, you really can't look at his specific choice as positive. Like, yes, what came from it was, you know, positive, but like Judas and that choice, it's, it's like if I try to, if I kill somebody, right? And the and that person I killed was supposed to win a lottery, but now another person won the lottery, right? No, I still want to kill that person. I didn't kill him so the other person can win the lottery. You understand? So like, I feel like it's kind of like that situation, that like that like you know you know what I mean? Like just because something different happened doesn't mean that you know. It, I would, it really can I say? say I, I feel like I think Judas was needed or not needed. I think Jesus when he said it, it was more of a prophecy because. The Pharisees were still going to kill him no matter what. They've been going for him for three years deep. They were going to figure it out something. So I don't think even if Judas said no, Jesus was still going to get crucified because we still needed that sacrifice no matter what. But Judas, Jesus was just like, the Holy Spirit, I'm pretty sure, because like when he got baptized, the Holy Spirit came. He was able to, he was doing everything through the Holy Spirit. It says this in, I think, Hebrews or something where. He did everything through Holy Spirit, so we can see that we can do everything as Jesus did with the Holy Spirit, right? So I think the Holy Spirit worked through him and showed him, like, yeah, this is going to happen. And he was just saying, this is this is a prophecy, just like how they did it in the Old Testament. Hmm. Very true. But I, mean, I see, I see your your points, Malik, as well. Hey, There's... sorry, go ahead. No, I'm just following my bet. <laughs> okay, I, I see your point because you know. It, it seems like, and this is common with, you know, some Christians that believe we almost don't have a choice that if God chooses you, you're going to be saved no matter what, and you're going to make the right choice. So in some way, we don't really have free will. Like everything is a story that was written by God. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but then guilt shouldn't exist. It's not just for guilt to exist if God controls us. You know, if a punishment means that we made the wrong choice. And, I mean, this is how I look at it. And you can tell me what you think about this. Uh, you might disagree. But what I believe is that since God knows everything, and we could agree that he knows everything, he would place his, you know, his human manifestation, Jesus, in the right position to where he knew that he was going to have a betrayer that was going to do such, such, and such at such, such, and such a time. So he knew that Judas would be the one that would betray him, and he knew what choice Judas would make. It doesn't mean that he made Judas make that choice, but he knew that if he put Jesus, he had him born here, and had him go and live here, and then had him do such and such an action on such and such a night, he knew that this person would betray him. And and so he put him there. And that's what ended up carrying out. Judas still made that choice. God just knew that he would make that choice and put Jesus in that position to facilitate fulfilling the prophecy. Have you, you guys have that? you guys read Zechariah or Ezekiel or Isaiah? I think so. I have, so uh, the majority of those those things that you just described, Jesus, where Jesus was born, yeah. things like that, that all fulfills prophecy. So that so all of that fulfills the mess, mess, messianic prophecy, Which right? Happens, right. So it had to. I mean, yeah, God told the prophets that it was going to happen, right? Um, so it is not a mic. It is God's plan, but it's not a like God saw the. It's. Not, trying to tread lightly here because i don't know everybody here you know what i mean but i'm uh it's it's not like god kind of looked at the looked at the landscape and was like okay let me put jesus in this perfect spot like god it fulfills prophecy god saw what was happening during the time of kings right during the time of chronicles where now we have you know this this civil war going on people are acting as like kind of sodom and gomorrah type of type of things going on um between israel and judah and now God starts trying to save his people through prophecy, right? And he's, and he, uh, they, these Zechariah, Ezekiel, and Isaiah, they have met, and Daniel too. A lot of the, I would jump into the prophecies, um, but if you want to kind of see how Jesus fulfills those prophecies, but. Right. Now, is um, God trying? Is he trying here? Like, is God trying to fulfill those prophecies or is he fulfilling those prophecies? Like, is there a no God, God? God, he fulfills those prophecies. He's right. the, he is the son of God. Right. He's he's the spirit of God. He's fulfilling those prophecies so the, on purpose. Right. A, the prophecies aren't a maybe or they might happen. Right. Right. So therefore, Judas did not have a choice because it's going to happen. Judas is the way born. the way they I never said his is, name got his heart 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 hardened. Okay, but he got, some could say Pharaoh at the end wanted to let the Israelites go, but God hardened his heart and and that forced him to continue to say no to the Israelites. Right before the the Exodus is when they go into the Moses takes them into the desert. Right, so you know there's the ten plagues and you know some you could read that and Pharaoh starts getting you know. He starts leaning towards yes, but God continues to harden his heart, right? Um, so he can fulfill fulfill his glory through so Pharaoh. Alec, huh? Do you do you think from that, um, if God hardened either Judas's or he definitely hardened Pharaoh's heart, do you think they are guilty? That's a well. I think Jesus washed his feet, right? And I think that says a lot that Jesus washed Judas's feet. Now, I think. You know, I kind of lean on scripture, right, when it comes to this subject where, you know, the potter, the Romans talks about the does not the potter have the right to turn, you know, to make one lump of clay good and another lump of clay bad, right? So does Judas end up in the kingdom? Well, you know, I I don't know, right? I don't know. But I know that Jesus is the ultimate atonement sacrifice for us, right? That had to happen. So some some pots are made for good and some are made for destruction and kind of like you know going back to job right where were you when i created the earth where were you when i created the seas so i th- you know some of that like some of that judas talk i think he god hardened his heart why did he harden judas's heart and then you know judas obviously dies the way he dies what happens after judas dies 
I don't know. I think there might be some, there might be better things to kind of use my mind. To, you know, I kind of like to lean on the scripture of, yeah. you know, some pots are made for good. Some pots are made for bad and God is God. And some of, some of that stuff is not us to determine why or justify why God did that. Right. But we know that God did that because we got to lean on God's character, right? He's sovereign. He's loving things that God does is from a caring heart. Right. So he, those things happened because he he so loved the world right and he we needed to have that ultimate atoning sacrifice or else none of us on this call uh would be would be worthy of being seen by god if that didn't happen right yeah but but do you not think that that judas had the right to be guilty like he should have been guilty because when he died and committed suicide it it seemed to me that he he knew what he did was such a a heinous sin and you know if if he knew that that would obviously mean that he was the one that committed it to a degree so that that's a good you know that's an interesting point right it does judas then you know judas what judas you know committed suicide and his guts you know his guts exploded but did he recognize jesus as the messiah which you right. know did jesus meet him you know, did Jesus meet him with the with the keys to heaven, heaven and hell and and what Judas in, you know, that's that's an art, you know, that could be a thing. You know, did Jesus, G, Judas repent? You know, is Ju, Judas's death a repentance? Right. I, we're kind of getting getting in a, in a rabbit hole theologically and I, right now. Was, right. And I just say what Judas said. Known for sinning as well. Yeah. He was known for his, his greed. Right. Can I just say what Jesus or Judas said? Please, um, please. So Matthew 27, huh? verse four, I have sinned, he said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us? They replied, that's your response. Oh, he's talking to the um, mm -hmm. to Pharisees, or the chief priests, right? So there's, they replied, that's your responsibility. So you just threw the money into the temple and left, and he went away and hanged himself. So pretty much it sounds like and then before that, let me start with uh, actually one. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people made their plans how to have Jesus executed. So they bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. When Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. I have sinned and said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us? They reply that that's your responsibility. And before we continue, I do know a lot of the disciples didn't even recognize Jesus as Lord until he came back. Like Doubting Thomas, Peter. Uh, yeah, We're reading, so, uh, reading a well, lot of I disagree with that. I think they, uh, know they recognized him as Lord. But I don't yeah. think they said this is my Lord and Savior God. and like and resurrected himself. Okay, but even well, remember, even remember when Jesus asked goal. Peter, "Who am I?" and he says, "You're the Christ, you're the Messiah," right? And then they, he said, "Well, who do they say I am?" And they say, "Well, are, you might be John the Baptist, you might be a prophet," right? Um, so the the disciples definitely knew who Jesus was, that he was the Messiah, and that he was the Christ. I would say, you know, uh, but from what Scripture did says, never, did they never did they never feel the need to figure? figure that out though like or Maybe that they saw the miracles right those are the gospels know. right those right. are the first hand the, um but you know like the devil knew he was the messiah there's a lot of where the bible verse says the demons know um uh, god or oh man i can't oh, believe i so forgot you, it you feel like you feel like um some of the disciples was still trying to figure out god or 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 do you feel like they already knew like we said, Jesus was the Messiah. Before. Well, I would say it's just like Christians today. There's a lot of people that says they're Christians. There's a lot of people. Jesus even said in Matthew 6 where there's a lot of, was it 6? There's a lot of people that are going to call me Lord, but uh, he's going to say, I don't know you. So I feel like a lot of disciples could have easily called him Lord and just still didn't know because it's not just simply saying you're the Messiah, you're my Lord, you're my Savior. 
but what are your fruits? Do you feed the sick? Are you loving your neighbors? Are you loving fruits your enemies? don't save you though? Fruits are not what what brings people into into being a Christian at all. It's it's believing that Jesus is the Son of God. You know, putting your faith in Him, calling Him your Savior, and repenting of your sins. We can't do enough works to atone for our previous sins. Yeah, but that's going straight to uh, what is that? Not um, it, it, you'll know man by their fruits. So it represents what's in your heart, but it doesn't save you. Yeah, so then I would say from Judas, that's his fruit show. If we want, like. It's not yeah, saying it's his totally work totally. makes him safe, but like a tree is no like a good tree is known by its good fruits, and that a diseased tree or a bad tree is known by its now, bad fruits. Now, do you feel like you can have good fruits without actually knowing Jesus? I would say yeah, sure. I would love to see your fruits to your enemies. Because even Jesus said, um, it's easy to love those who love you. But what about to your enemies pretty much like like an easy one? I hope it's just a topic, a big topic we all know. But Palestine and Israel, right? How do they treat each other? Though? Are they showing love? There are a lot of people that show love and are just like wanting to forgive and move past this and have peace and patience and kindness to each other. And there's a lot of people that say, screw that, kill them on both sides. So you really can know. From not just how they treat their neighbors who love them, but to their enemies, to the or like the sick. Do they take care of the orphans? Do they care? And I'm not saying you have to go to like an orphanage today, but I'm just saying like uh, Jesus literally says when um, there's someone hungry, do you actually feed them? Or if someone needs shelter, are you going to shelter them? Or are you just like yeah, yeah, I'll see y'all on Sunday, and then like so I say all that just like. The fruits don't save you. It just shows your conviction. And do you, are you really pr living it, living like Jesus? Because he says, listen, your heirs, if you're saved, your heirs of the Father. Um, so you can share the glory with me, but also you have to suffer with me. And you can really look at do people suffer for Christ or do they suffer for themselves? You know? Mm. Yeah, I think the people that that are not Christian can definitely do good things, do good fruits. I mean, that's just a matter of will. That's not what saves you, but yeah, that's fair. But like, look at Judas. Did he suffer for Christ in that moment, or did no, like... no, no? So Judas, uh, just like I believe that there's people that are not Christian that do good fruits, but yeah, I mean, that's what Jesus. That doesn't says. mean that yeah, most I agree. Are good people. Yeah, that's that's what I was I was just answering to the question. Oh. But I, I don't want to miss the thing that Judas Judas said as well earlier. He said, um, I have betrayed innocent blood. The relevance there is that he knows that he did something. That's what he's saying. He's saying, I did that. Yes. And so I don't believe that it was that he was not guilty of doing what he did, because he said he literally did it. He said I have betrayed innocent blood. Yeah. I like it. And that's his like choice. He blanked out and then he woke up and he was like, what happened last night? Oh, you betrayed Jesus. Yeah. That's not what happened. Like werewolf style. <laughs> For sure. I still feel like God. That'd was... be the worst hangover ever. You know? <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty bad. <laughs> very, very bad. I like it. I like it. Well, let's keep it. Let's keep moving. We're, we're, we're kind of rolling today. I like it. All right. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jewish leaders kept shouting, if you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat at a place known at the stone pavement, which in Ar Aramaic is Gab Gabbatha. It was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about noon. Here is your king. Pilate said to the Jews, but they shouted, take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your, ki your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priest answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. Pretty, mm. pretty fair there. So, so Caesar's their king, which is, which is a worldly, this is a worldly man, right? Like this is, this is your, your typical president um 
pope king type figure right so that yeah, caesar the king of rome we know caesar yeah right? yes. caesar's pretty bit rough i like it i like it the crucifixion of jesus so the soldiers took charge of jesus carrying his own cross he went out to the place of the skull which mind if i did something on that real quick okay interesting because the jews um god was originally the one that led the Jews, and then they rejected him and asked for a king, and God gave them a king. Seems almost like they're doing that again here. Anyway. That's huge. That's but quick, I wanted to add on that. I feel like that's, I feel like that's kind of a big thing about human nature and about, um, like, it's a testament to kind of how evil our, fle our flesh is. Like, you know, even in that excerpt alone, like, you think about this whole process like what you just said is like now what's happening you know i, I think that's kind of what why what he did is so um so amazing you know how he ended up dying for these people after you know all of us so i just i just wanted to talk about the significance of that right quick i just feel like that's um yeah. after hearing you say that it just makes it so much greater yeah i also wanted to tangent off of it a little bit y'all had my mind moving there when you kind of when you kind of tangent it into our own personal lives here, um, what was I kind of going with this? As far as how the how the world, right? Because we I know we talk about it a lot as far as you know living in the world and then living in our spiritual walk. Um, how living in the world is so easy and so common to have your own kings, your own worldly priests, or your own worldly idols, right? that can get in the way and blind you and fog you as far as who our ultimately who our ultimate you know messiah and our ultimate king is which is which is God and Jesus um i just wanted to touch on that a little bit as far as you know they asked for a king in the world he gave them a king in the world right for their betterment probably not um but that you could also see that in our own lives you know like oh i'm asking for God, can you please send me the right mentor that'll get me further along in my career? Or can you send me the right opportunity or like, you know, or, you know, the right, the right Bible study so I can get closer to you? Like we put, we, we, we place these Kings to get us somewhere or somebody above us. Can you, can you, can you give me a business partner that'll teach me the right business stuff? Where it's like, he, he should be the King, you know, at all times. I just, but that's, that's good, man. Like choice that's, that's why i feel like choice is such a matter so much you know we'll go back to judah a little bit just to you know try to make a, a, a relation you know when we talk about choice right ultimately even whatever we ask god for it's gonna be up to us to make it good or make it bad right a king could have been a good thing because he could have been a prominent figure who spread the word of jesus right if you know whatever whatever but i feel like that's just literally it comes down to choice or kind of what you're doing with it, you know, because you can ask God for anything. Like, I, I remember, we were, Alec, we were talking about uh, the other day, we were talking about, like, um, how some people, like, God, please let this girl want to sleep with me. You know, like, how, how we just kind of <laughs> ask, we just, like, you know, we're, we're out in this, whatever, we're just out in, in the streets, and we're just like, yo. Yeah. You know, and but, like, these are... It's just about what you do with what you're asking for or what you're the way you're asking. I feel like that's kind of determining determining factor of if it's glorifying God or if it's not, you know. But ultimately, I feel like where you go wrong with with that situation, kind of with the king, is all self. Those are all self betterment things, you know. And I feel like that's the biggest a red flag, right? If it's honoring me, it's probably you know what I'm saying the not the right decision, you know. So. Right. Yeah, it's good, GB. I think we need to ask ourselves. I think First Samuel is a good book for this con for this concept. Um, but uh, what are we putting our trust in? Right? Yeah. Are we putting our trust in the mentor? Are we putting our trust in the Bible study? Or are we putting our trust in in Jesus and in God's sovereign love? You know? Yeah, I think that's that's good. That's huge. That's huge. All righty, let's see the crucifixion of Jesus. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus, carrying his own cross. He went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a, not had a notice prepared 
and fastened to the cross, it read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews pro prote protested to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, divided them into four shares, one for each of them with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. Okay, so Jesus just got killed. I want to I want to make a point and um I remember we were last last meeting I we were telling uh, I was trying to tell I was telling you Lee, to really if you really truly watch the path of the Christ and you get a chance. Um but and you don't have to cuz most of the, whatever you need is in the scripture, don't get me wrong. But um, just for depiction purposes and really kind of understanding the detail of what kind of jesus went through on the cross you know um my mom, my mom said i gotta listen to you and watch it so i gotta watch it now <laughs> you gotta watch it bro um because you know because even and i don't i don't have any problem with the word of christ but you know even kind of hearing this and how brief it is you know it um just kind of bothers not it doesn't bother me but just i, I just know it's so much more you know, it just kind of. I was quick. He got killed. It was, was right. It just kind of go through it, but you know, it was it, it was bad. You know, so and and then when you think about us, I feel like I feel like the part that makes it so significant is you think about us as humans, right? And you think about first of all, you think about doing something for other people, right? Right, whatever the task may be, we think about like paying for somebody for whatever, whatever it could be, and then. You think about dying for somebody. It's like, wow, you think about dying for the whole human race, right? And do you think about going through stuff, nails in your hand, crying, whatever? It just makes it so much significant knowing how we are as humans, knowing that we would not do that for him, right? Like, that's just a fact, you know what I'm saying? Like, no matter how much a lot of people protest to love God, right? The, the like, most people would not get on that cross and go through what he went for if it was the other way around, right? So, you know, I just really like to, whenever I talk about this specific part of the Bible, I feel like this is, if not, you know, the most, top three most important, or one most important part yeah. in the Bible that, you know, we're talking about Jesus and his, you know, sacrifice for our sins, you know, it and is. these evil people around him. These are like the worst of where, like, I'm, we're regular people, right? These are like, demons compared to what we do on a day-to-day -day basis right even if i didn't like somebody i wouldn't be calling for him to be killed it can be the most personal complete opposite ideology of what i believe in hate black people whatever you know what i'm saying and i wouldn't even call for them to be killed because of whatever so i just think about it's, it's a, like him dying for the worst people in the world right in front of him also with us so you know yeah it's just important to think about yeah, I think that was huge. I think that was very important for us to not just read past that part. Like that's a very important, you know, that's a, that is the that is the biggest context right there as far as no. He literally right here, he literally just died for humanity, you know? <laughs> like not and not only just us, you know, not even just the believers or the or the good, but even the bad, you know? I think I think that that that's huge. Anybody else had anything on that on 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 Jesus's death here? All I right. think it's pretty cool. Yeah, how Pilate um put it in all three different languages, even what? though it was kind of. I feel like deep down he knew the truth, and he's like, "Dang, this this guy is the dude. I gotta put it in all different languages so that I know." Fair. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it was like. Was Pilate forced to do that? Because it seemed like he was really on Jesus' side. Yeah. I, I feel like it's like that. Human, I think, well, he, he was the one had, who had the power of choice, but he was afraid. Yeah, of but like, if, if you scroll up a little bit, it says here is like, here's Jesus, the king of the Jews, whenever he's talking to the Jews, and they say that's not our king, crucify him. Caesar mm -hmm. is our king, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Right. So it, it seemed like he was trying to persuade them, like, this is your king, you know? Yeah, shall I, I crucify your king? 
pilot asked. We have no king but Caesar. Yeah. So yeah. It seemed like he was kind of trying for it, but I feel like if he wouldn't have crucified him, pilot would have died and he wouldn't want that. No, so no, he was for just sure. going through with it almost. Yeah. Who was in that? Other, other... In other um, places, it says that he was afraid. When they said that Jesus was a blasphemer, he was afraid. Um, and then he washed his hands because he still thought he was innocent. And I think his fear was the primary deciding factor because he had the power. That's what he said to Jesus. He has the power to either let him live or kill him. Yeah. Um, and when the Jews said what they said, I think his fear drove him to to making the choice to let him get killed. Right. Okay. That's kind of what it seemed and like. I, it seemed like he was kind of rooting for Jesus right there at the end. Well, he was That's definitely the, the first words him. he the first words he spoke to him, he was rooting for him, to be honest. Yeah, he was definitely rooting for him, but that doesn't mean that he didn't let his fear get the best of him, which probably sure. didn't feel really good. No, absolutely. But at the same time, look at it from the other side. I do feel like that's the case. Like, I do. I'm right there with you guys on this. But I did want to take a look at it from a different perspective. What if Caesar didn't, you know, what if he didn't? What if he didn't allow them to crucify him? And what if he was the one that was crucified? You know, like, and he sure. might have done the right thing, but but exactly, but would it have been the right thing? Because this is ultimately what God needs to have to ha have to happen. You know, like yeah, we look well, at sure, it but from a negative. Yeah, that doesn't mean that what he did wasn't sinful. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, most definitely. Who was that? Um, that who was the last disciple we were talking about that denied Jesus? What was his name? I can't think of that boy Peter. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, right. Jesus three times. I think about it. I think yeah, about yeah. it kind of like. Not necessarily like Peter, but yeah. I feel like the, we were talking about kind of the difference between Peter and uh, Judas uh, like that time. And I feel like it's like certain things like I feel like this like him. You put yourself in situations. Right. And I feel like when you put yourself in human situations, like have like being a part of the Roman Empire and being a general yeah. of it. Right. And I feel like you think about situations like this when you could possibly yeah, and mind you, I'm completely, I'm completely against giving Jesus up to die. But when you think about like just situations and putting yourself in it, when it comes to him being a general, just, if, and you know, Caesar clearly being right. this mad leader, like you know, you you can see how he's depicted. He's like, a, 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 you know, he's a, a ruthless leader, right? And then um, you think about like decisions and like. I'm not saying the bare minimum should be okay. I'm not saying like him just because he was, you know, rooting for Jesus means that he's okay because of what he did. But I just try to like, he, he, I feel like him, he has a chance to, to be forgiven, you know, you know, after that, after that whole thing, right. You think about, um, um, okay. just that specific, what you say? No, I said, continue on. I, I interrupt. Oh. Yeah, I was like, I was like, man, like I think about like him, like I was like, man, well, I feel like it makes it so much. I feel like he's the people that Jesus was dying for, right? Like people who like the like Pilot is like a complete. What I think of people that, that Jesus died for, I believe it was all of us. But when I think about people like him, like who have the chance to be forgiven of their sins because of situations, decisions that maybe they might not even wanted to fully commit. Or like, you know, about things like this, but because Jesus died for us, now we can be forgiven of things like that. And I feel like in today's society, forgiveness is not a big thing, right? We don't, you know, a lot of people aren't forgiven because, oh, what he did was way too hard. He can't come back from that, you know, but like, right. this man gave Jesus up, I will basically, you know, was the reason why he got crucified. Yeah. So, you know, I just think about that situation in, in just terms of just like forgiveness. I feel like this forgiveness is really what um that's true. Screams out to me from that. I think a big a big like kind of topic that was ringing, not even topic, simple question that you keep running running around that was running in my head is this this question of like is sometimes what's best well, is sometimes what is best and versus what's right, you know, like when they collide, you know, like this question as far as like for uh, Simon Peter in that situation, like is Simon Peter doing what's right, ultimately what's best for that situation? Like what good would have genuinely came out of, you know, I feel like he probably should have, but let's just be honest. As soon as he would have said, yeah, 
you know, like, are you, what was it? Uh, he denied him, right? Let's say he didn't deny Jesus at that moment. What good would that have even provided to that situation, considering he would have just died? You know, like, it's kind of, I don't know. Same thing here. This probably, probably would have happened. I mean, the thing is, is just because there are dire consequences to telling the truth to do what is right, that doesn't mean you don't have a choice. You absolutely still have a choice. It just means right. the consequences are higher. It's possible. I mean, it's almost definitely true that Pilate would have had extreme consequences to not making a certain choice, but there was still a right and a wrong choice, and he right. made the wrong choice. Oh. With Peter, Peter did the same thing. Peter um, avoided the consequences. He was afraid of the consequences, despite saying, promising to Jesus earlier that he would never deny him. Yeah. And Jesus also predicted that. He predicted that. Peter would deny him, and P Peter did not get possessed by the devil or have God hard in his heart. Right. Peter, then when the, the lady at the door, the girl at the door let him in, she said, aren't you, aren't you one of his disciples? He's like, no. And then it happened twice more by the fire. Mm -hmm. And then the rooster crowed and he realized that he felt guilty that was prophesied. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't forced to make that decision. That's why he felt guilty. But it was prophesied by Jesus earlier that night. Right. Michael, yeah. I think what you're really looking for is I think I want to go back to the story of Daniel, right? And and um in the lion's den. In the lion's den. Or um the three dudes that went into the fire. I just can't pronounce them. I'm gonna butcher it. Uh, you good? Um, <laughs> right here with you. Shout out to me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Daniel, um, pretty much, he was like, "I'm gonna put my faith in God," and um, he was supposed to get killed, but because he still put his faith in, it actually mm -hmm. became a great story that we can see when we put our faith in God. He can still work. There's a lot of times okay. where we're just like, "Man," but if I put myself in that situation. God could still use me so much more if I was alive. Because, like, one topic, especially because we're in Florida, I think everyone's in Florida, yeah. you'll hear about gun laws and, well, I should have self defense. And what if someone comes up to me and blah, blah, blah? My only thing is just like, um, just have faith, you know? You can choose to have faith in God or you can put your faith in your gun. I, at the end of the day, I don't care because it's you and God during Judgment Day. I'm just here to show love, right? I don't care. But, it's if Peter and I think again, like it's a prophecy because the Holy Spirit came, right? But okay, uh huh, keep going. But I think it's just back to like Peter when he was, um, yeah, he, um, was walking on the water to Jesus and he looked away, right? Peter could I'm... have just locked in the whole time, yeah. And that's what I'm battling with here is because we keep looking at this from a perspective of like, man, that shouldn't have happened. But didn't all this happen for our greater good? Like, didn't all this happen because it, it had to happen for us? Like, didn't, like, we keep getting back to these prophecies. Uh, it's like, you know, right. God needed this to be fulfilled, right? So, like, yeah. why is this not the right choice here? Like, why was this I not? Mean, the whole, why was the this whole story really is just, like, correct me if I'm wrong here, but isn't it God almost giving us the answers, throwing prophecies, prophecies getting, um, what's the word i'm looking for fulfilled mm -hmm. and men just continuing to almost ignore it or be men shy right. away from it a little bit that's the whole yeah. cycle that we go through with the kings the false prophets all that we get jesus and that's the true messiah like he shows it in the flesh people see it his um his what's it called see it and they still choose to sometimes deny it that's just like the story of man right there just refusing yeah. to accept it almost yeah i was gonna say i was gonna say i feel like that's the like the main reason why i brought up those situations was to basically change the way we were reading it like you were saying i wanted us to look at it like these men that are doing these things are not different than the average male or mm -hmm. human on the earth making these mistakes you Ooh. know what i'm saying and that's how i kind of wanted us to kind of maybe 
equal the way we were reading it out and not think as much hateful. I like they made mistakes, but like not think, you know, kind of just read it kind of straight through. Like, yes, they did this, but I'm saying like, yes, but that's what like these men are like that. Like, yeah, the average male or the average person who's going to make, who's going to like go off of, you know, kind of what they know or what they cling to, which is going to be their own thing, which we should get away from. Don't get me wrong. Like we should not operate like that, but like just, that's how most like you know what I'm saying. If anybody in like pilot isn't any worse than another like who, who's the next man to pilot that was gonna make the same mistake. You know what I'm saying? So oh, like, that's the only reason I brought it up. Yeah, Just but if we keep day. going, and then but like the 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 concept that's banging on my head right here is what happens if none of this is fulfilled? Is my thing. okay? Okay, I got that. Is answer it for that, or do will we just never? Yeah, know? it has to be no, fulfilled. No. no, let's go back to Adam and Eve. Really easy because do you think Adam and Eve had a choice? Yes or no? A physical voice. You said voice? Choice. 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 Did, could Eve yeah. deny the devil? Or was it always said that she was going to have to listen to the devil, eat the fruit, and we were going to end up like this way? I think that's just free will, man. Like, yeah, she chose god god gave us free will for a reason he could he could easily control everything could easily do yeah. that and make it a perfect world but he loves us so much he gave us free will and if you choose so to that. not be with him then you choose to not be with him he lets that be but he sees that yeah. he knows already he knows your end choice i think you we know agree not. right but i think yeah. michael is battling something right now and i'm trying to pinpoint <laughs> it right now yeah I like he that. says my, so, Michael does not think free will exists. You get a destination, a destiny. No, and that's I do. Him. No, I do believe that free free choice exists, right? I'm just following. Okay. I, my, I'm battling with the concept of imagine if we didn't make the right or wrong decisions in the concept as far as what he needed to be fulfilled. And I feel like that's the same thing when it comes to some of our lives at times. I feel like God has a purpose for us. I feel like at certain times and certain moments, he needs us to, to fulfill certain things that he needs done. And I feel like we do have that free choice as far as choosing spirit and choosing flesh. But when you look at it from a bigger picture, right, we're talking about people making decisions, but then we talk about pots being made. Well, all this is being made from God, right? And if he's all knowing, he's already understanding the choices that we're going to make to fulfill prophecy, When you, especially when you look at it from, from the text. These things were supposed to happen to fulfill what God needed to happen. True or false? Yeah. yeah. Well, 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 you're you're right. Right. Go back to yeah. Adam and Eve. But what happens if these yeah. people don't fulfill what God needed to be fulfilled? Is that for our thing? Or is that way. For so our it needs to, what God put in prophecy needs to happen. And you're right that if these things didn't happen, you know, then that would obviously mean that, you know, the prophecy wasn't fulfilled. Right, so when so, Jesus but, dies here, when, yes, it's a terrible. So let me, but like, let me. Why does that sorry, say again? Say I said again. Like, when we read the text as far as the crucifixion of Jesus, and we when we read these people making right and wrong decisions, why does the wrong decision con contextually, as far as uh, Pilate not not letting them kill him because it, this wasn't right? Why yeah. do we look at that as a bad thing? Like, why do we look at Jesus dying as a bad? Thing, right, is that not yeah. a good thing? For so me, I think this is like oh, between it. Wait, wait. We there's gotta a difference go back. between it being a good thing or a bad thing overall and a, being a good thing or a bad thing individually. You don't want to be the person that um, looks like you paused. Are you there, Malik? Yeah, I'm here. I just put it on mute. Can oh, you okay. Gotcha. Your screen like froze for a second, so I wasn't sure. Um, but I think there's a difference between being a good thing that happened overall and being a good thing that happened for you you making that decision you know might be a very bad thing even though it moves the story along now you do believe in free will because i've talked to you many times about stoicism and stuff and reacting to emotions correctly right but uh what do you think do you think god knows what choices you're going to make in the future that's a good, that's a good, great decision. I mean, that's a great question. I feel like in the future, um, I don't think so. I mean, I'm scared to say that, you know, but that's just where I'm at currently. I feel like, yeah. I feel like he, 
He, but then again, I can't say I'm 100% certain on that because the more I read this text, the more I feel like he's all knowing. He's already knowing my character enough to realize yeah. these certain situations or these certain things that come up in my life. Either I may lean further towards these decisions or he may already know exactly what I'm going to happen to do. That's something sure. that I'm still having a daily fight on today. And I, sure, hate, and I hate to, and I hate to think that he already does know exactly what choice I'm going to make because then yeah. I feel like I lose my ego. I lose my control, yeah, yeah, yeah. I lose my power. And I and all I can do right now is be completely authentic with you guys. That's something that I'm sure. still fighting with on a day-to-day. Well, yeah, it's, hey, it's can I really add solid. something here? Just maybe? Yeah, go for We're, it. Oh, so go. this <laughs> predestination free will talk, like – Mm. These are unanswered questions in the theological world, right? I would say, I, there's, I feel so predestined. I would look up if you're curious of what predestination is, I would look up Calvinism, right? And then free will, I would look up loss of salvation. And then I would encourage you to read scripture and pray on that and what, and, and go to God with that, right? We're kind of giving man opinions right now, like, there's something fundamental about predestination is predestination has nothing to do with whether or not you have free will or not. Right. So that's why I said I would encourage you if you if you're leaning on predestination to look up what Calvinism is and then go to the scripture. Right. Predestination. If you say that there's predestination, you're not discrediting free will. It's it's the concept of are there elect people that are going to be saved or are there not elect people? And then if there's free will and anybody could be saved and you have to ask the question of is there loss of salvation right i think so i would just you know we i'm, I'm scared we're going in a i know you're the mediator here malik but i'm just trying oh, to jump in here and no, just kind of try sure. to you know we're um, going down that rabbit hole again you know but yep. i would say with peter the con the peter denying jesus three times let's not lose the sentiment on what that is right jesus knowing peter's character knowing us as humans we are going to sin every day. We not we may not be killing people. We may, may not be getting drunk anymore. We may, may not be doing drugs anymore. But I can imagine that I'm not the only one that has looked at a woman and had a lustful thought about that woman. Right? That is sin. Right? I, I maybe you're maybe if somebody today I was at a graduation party spoke a little bit out of pocket to one of my younger friends and I really like in my head thought about like picking him up and slamming him on the concrete. Right. <laughs> yeah. But, but I didn't, right. I didn't, but that that's so calmly, oh. you know, you know, that, that thought, was, that thought yeah. in itself is things that I need my heart to fix. Cause Jesus wouldn't have thought like that. He just would have immediately went and gave that person love and encouragement. Right. So right. it's mm -hmm. it, the, the Peter denying Jesus needs, we need to be encouraged by that because one Peter is the rock of the church, right. For the Jewish people. Right. So that shows a lot about God's character too, but it's daily repentance guys. Right. If we don't think we're walking through the world, repenting, we need to like let Jesus wash our feet. Right. If we go back to when he told Peter about, um, that you're going to deny me three times. Peter said, wash my whole body then. And Jesus said, I don't need to wash your whole body. You're clean. You've accepted me. I need to right. wash your feet or you have no part of me. Right. So I think the question we're going down this predestination loss of salvation thing no. at the end of the day, both concepts revolve around, are you repenting daily? And are you letting Jesus wash your feet with the word of God on a daily basis? And that's maybe for be for silent consideration, right? But repentance and the resurrection are the cornerstones of our faith as Christians, right? So I would just, you know, I hate to like, I'm just, I just want to throw that out there, right? I love you brothers, right? Brothers in Christ. But, you know, Calvinism for predestination, I would look into that a little bit more and, and read scripture on that and pray. And then there's also scripture for loss of salvation, right? Being blotted out of the, the tree of life. So these, we're never going to find the right answer. We're just going to keep going back not. and forth That's on this, true. right? So Wouldn't I would pray, spiral. read and pray, my brothers. That's what, and repent. Yeah. That's what we need to do. Read, pray, and repent, okay? And I and I want to say is, it says in the Bible that it might be even like, um, like certain things, like thinking about the infinity of Jesus as God's power or certain things are like ungodly to try and like, understand like not understand but like trying to think about so hard to the point where you understand it. like certain things like he said might be one you, can't <laughs> you know what i'm saying but that, i want to say one thing before before we, we go back on the word bro 
regardless what choice you make, the Lord's will is going to be done, right? And I feel like when you're talking about um, if I if, if, if I make this choice, this is what happened. Just like you think about your past, maybe if I didn't do that, right, my life would have been different. But it's like, but the Lord's will is going to be done regardless. And I feel like in the future, just praying that, you know, I, God, I know whatever, you know, I know your, your will is going to be done regardless. I pray that you guide me, you know, to make the best, choices or you know things but i know ultimately we yeah. gonna win this game but we're gonna <laughs> lose this game let's <laughs> just relate back to baseball you know but and so that's and what you, i try to you know, you think god gonna give you way better odds at winning that ball game i promise you or p and peace about it whatever out whatever the outcome is yeah because it's always, it's always a sovereign one right Alex, right for our greater good hey it, do you believe that jesus christ resurrected and died for you and is and if you repent of your sins right repent means to turn away right so again kind of leaning on the story of peter it doesn't mean we're perfect when we repent but it means that we now have an advocate with the father we have jesus christ who died for us resurrected from the dead and now has the keys to heaven and hell and if we repent of our sins and let him and you know my prayer is for obedience kind of what G, on gb right god grant me the obedience to do your will grant me your obedience to walk in your will and then grant me the obedience to know that when it when i need to repent that i will repent but you know i think something i'm always asking myself guys is do i believe that my sins are forgiven with the repentance and resurrection of jesus christ do i have a level one faith on that or level 10 faith on that right and if and i am always praying to constantly build up to that level 10 faith because at the end of the day that is what saves us is knowing believing truly believing in your heart that jesus christ we have salvation in jesus christ we can repent of our sins right. and and be obedient to him right um and that brings peace. That's brought peace in my life, right? Knowing that, hey, there's nothing I can do, good or bad, that's gonna change. That's gonna that's gonna get me to heaven. It's only if Jesus knew me, you know. And He says that, hey, if if you know me, you're my friend. And if you're yeah. my friend, I'm going to show you things. I'm going to speak with you, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna teach you, and I'm gonna sanctify you, right? We're being sanctified, guys. It's a lifelong long process. What justifies us to be sanctified, to repent, to walk in holiness, which means to be set apart, not perfect, right? To be set apart. It's because we're justified with the blood of Jesus Christ. And now when we repent, we can we can start to be sanctified, right? And I, it's, you know, what happens to us at the end, at the end of the day, has everything to do with our heart. Do we truly believe a level 10 faith that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, died for us, and that we have repented of our sins you now, know how do we, yeah. amen we, well what i want to say yeah go ahead brent what i want to say next like um obviously with what alec just said is probably the most important thing that we will have talked about here um so i don't want to like us to forget about the fact that you know um repentance is so relevant so you know make a mental note to remember that but i also want to go back onto something um, a bit of a different topic Jesus or God is all powerful and I think that's a very important part of understanding who God is is knowing that his he's got infinite knowledge as well he knows everything that's how he can make all these prophecies because he knows what's going to happen um, even if he doesn't make it happen and that's just who our God is he he doesn't control everything, but he could control everything. He is all powerful and he knows everything that's going to happen. Um, and so just because he knows that something is going to happen, like in the, in the case of Peter, if he was to control that and force Peter to do something, there would be no reason why Peter would break down in tears and you know run off like he did because Peter wouldn't have actually been the one that did that. That would have just been god writing his movie his movie script that we cannot change and i don't think that's how it works at all yeah I but think he knows that you're gonna sin he knows sin. every single sin that you're gonna make malik he knows every single one and that's kind of a freaky thing but he does um and so if he wanted to bring about a certain prophecy in your life what he would do is he would place someone or something there and he would know how you would react to that. He wouldn't be controlling your reaction necessarily, but he knows that if he puts this here, 
if he makes this natural disaster happen here, you would react in such and such a way that would facilitate the prophecy. Right. So you don't feel I would have a choice in how I would react to that? Do you, I do. No, no, no. You would you would choose to react a certain way, but he already knows how you would react. So he would put something there like a storm and he'd be like, I know if I put a storm here, Malik, by his own free will, by his own choice, is going to do this. And so he put the storm there. His will was to put the storm there. Your will was to react to it. But he already knew how you're going to react. Does that kind yeah. of make sense? Okay, so he's not, Encour so be he's encouraged not. that you're you're if you repent, right? If we're repenting, to me, sinning has become harder for me to do because repenting sucks. I like right. I hate going to God and having to repent and, and apologize to him for that, right? So like it should be getting easier to to weather those storms, right? If if we're repenting. But you know, God does the better God does for all things for good for those that love him. Right. So we can, it's not that we're immune to suffering, right? Like you're going to go through storms. You're a Christian though, but now you have peace in knowing that, you know, you're suffering for a purpose You're as we suffer, we get closer to Christ. Right. So. But Brent, I'm going to yeah, mute my mic. I'm not going to talk Malik, anymore on this. Sorry guys. Yeah, I just, so Brent, I, I think that's question. important. I have a question. I have yeah. a question. Friend. Malik, what were you thinking about that? Yeah. Yeah. So I do believe that the the storms, right, the 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 chaos, the 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 situations are definitely presented from God, right? Now, do you feel like the reaction is already chosen by God, or is that a test to figure out my character a little bit more, or is that no, a no. To see how I'm going to react? Do I not have a choice to either I'm going to choose my flesh here, or I'm going to choose my spirit here? Because I believe I have the ability to to come to God in the situations he puts into my life to make the decision. Hey, hey am I going to choose two simple decisions? There's usually two simple choices. Mm -hmm. Am I going to choose flesh or am I going to choose my spirit? And I mm -hmm. feel like he gives me that choice. I don't feel like he already knows exactly what choice I'm going to make depending on situations. Can no, I? Yeah. So let me, so yes, he does put like storms and stuff there for you. Um, and you do have free will to make the choice that you do, but he knows which one you'll choose. He knows whether you'll choose flesh or not. That doesn't mean that he um, is controlling you necessarily, because you have to think. Now, this, this is going to be something that might be a little bit difficult to pay attention with, um, mm. but just do your best, because it's kind of a complex concept. But God doesn't live bound by time, which means that he can go forward and back without really affecting it. It's a separate program to him. And so he can see everything that's going to happen. Um, and that's a difficult concept for us to get because if we were to make something happen, that would be like forcing it to happen. Um, God doesn't necessarily have to make something happen in order to know that it will happen. Right. But if God already knows what choice I'm going to make, that I didn't have a choice. Like, I would say I don't this is feel it. like God knows what I'm well, going not to necessarily no I feel like he's not. watching what decision I'm going to choose but I'm not sold on the fact that God already knows if I'm going to choose my flesh or I'm going to choose my spear I'm not sold there well he's, he's got infinite knowledge but yeah. but in order to yeah. allow you to choose him <laughs> Lorenzo's itching oh, man, well. <laughs> he's itching Lorenzo's itching go what do you what, what's been building up brother talk to us okay I'm ready for it. Uh, so I feel like the whole wait. Huh? This is a common trap, and I think most people get mixed up. It's God knows every situation. If everyone like did every infinite, like he's he's so all knowing. It's not just oh I know what you're gonna do. It's like I know every single option times like to the billionth power to like the billionth of the billionth of the billionth. Like that's how crazy he knows. And I'm going to go simply to 1 Corinthians 13, 7. Um, I call it the definition of love. Um, and it's like the ending part of it. It's like love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. We all know there's a Bible verse that says God is love. That is God right there. He is hopeful. He never loses faith. He doesn't give up. So even though he knows every single option, that if everyone did the infinite option, he knows every single, like, we don't even have a number of how many possibilities there is. 
He's always hopeful. And I say this because look at Abraham. Because I say this because if we compare it to Abra Abraham and Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve could have definitely said no to the fruit. He gave Abraham the same option as in, listen, kill your son, right? Are you faithful? And we know this because at, at the end of it, I think it's like Genesis. Oh, fudge. I remember that he says, um, your faith. And it was like a test to see what Abraham would do. He knows every single option Abraham could do, every but single does, way, and how it would affect everyone. Does he know every single outcome is my question. Yes. yes. He knows every, like, so, but he's still hopeful. So why, so why should I make a choice? Because Malik, you live with the spirit of God in you now, right? That's what living in the spirit is, right? We are trapped in the flesh. Paul talks about this a lot in, in Romans and in Corinthians, right? Living in the spirit. As we live in the, in the spirit, we're letting the spirit of God that lives in us, the Holy Spirit, guide our decisions, guide our walk. We then, it our discernment builds up to where we do then make better decisions, right? You, but like Lorenzo just said, God is Jesus loves you. He's all forgiving. So if we do fall into the flesh, I knew I I know I said I wasn't going to speak on this. Sorry, guys. But if you we fall into the flesh, right? We have that forgiveness in Jesus, right? But we do have the Holy Spirit living in us. So you know we want to live in the Spirit. That's why you know we stay in God's Word. We stay around fellowship. We we pray uh, without ceasing. Right, because the Holy Spirit lives within us. So if we're walking in the Spirit, then our discernment is going to increase. And now that decision, Malik, you're talking about there that that voice inside your head of whether you should be doing something or not becomes more clear. Right now, the outcome, what that outcome is, right? God knows what those outcomes are, right? But we can have discernment and we can walk in the Spirit, and and that will better guide our best guide our decisions that we make on a day to day. So why should you make the decision? It's not that you're making the decision. You're making a decision to walk in the spirit, right? To let, to let the old Malik die, right? Let his thoughts die. Deny yourself and walk in the spirit and let the spirit guide your decisions and your thoughts now. Yeah. As, I like it. <laughs> I like it. Sorry, my brain got to, got to running though. I needed those, I needed some answers. Where do we leave off? Oh, good, bro. Jesus, Jesus appears to Mary Mag Magdalena. Magdalene, Magdalene. Magdalene. Well, I don't think we we didn't read about that. We kind of cut yeah. short. Did, I don't think, did we start twenty? No, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, yeah, let's, no. no. Oh, hold on, I got excited. I got excited. I got excited. Yeah, we were skipping, man. Come on. But I think twenty-four. <laughs> Where did we left off? I don't feel like we finished. Uh, we definitely didn't get to this. We didn't see any more Jesus talking. We didn't finish Let's 19. Up a little bit. Uh, 25. Uh, verse 25, we ended up, right? For, uh, okay. Chapter 19, verse 25. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right after they divided the close. <clears throat> right, we're back. We're back. We're back on the, we're, we're back on the road here. The script always leaves, leads us off, but that's okay. That's what we're here for. They divided my clothes among them and cast lots of my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cl Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son, and to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. The death of Jesus. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it. Put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath. Because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus and then those of the other. But, what, but when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. 
Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, and he testifies so that you also may believe. These things happen so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. Wow. I, really I got a question. Hold on. I got a question um, about the guy that pierced him. Wasn't there a story about like he was blind, the blood hit him and he saw. Talk about it. I, don't I know. saw something about that. I, I could have sworn that. that no. There's a story on the guy who actually was pierced up. Jesus. That's if you a, click on those little comment power. bubbles, it'll tell you what, uh, where, what book the prophecy is fulfilled. I'm pretty sure on the Bible app. The if you go down to what you just highlighted, if you click on that little comment bubble, Exodus. Yep. Psalms. That's huge. So these are so when the okay so that's an actual that's a prophecy. Explain a prophecy. Mm. Explain a prophecy. So it's uh so prophecy is things that were foretold in the Old Testament by God or um, by prophets, right, that are that Jesus fulfills. So uh, a big one that's very popular, right, that we all all should know, right, is in Zechariah when he pro prophesied that the Messiah would uh, ride into Jerusalem on a colt, on a baby donkey, right? Um, so Zechariah, 500 years before Jesus' birth or death, um, had a had a vision from God and prophesied this to to the people of Israel, um, and it was and it was fulfilled, right? So prophecy is, you know, I guess to use like a worldly example would be if I if I got a vision that uh, GB was going to be named Teacher of the Year at the end of this year, right? And then he was the Teacher of the Year, right? You would then look to me and be like, whoa. Alec, where'd you get that information from? Right. And it would be, it would be credible. Right. And I, if I said, God gave me that vision, right. Then you would believe, then you would probably believe that um, I had a, I had a vision from God because what I said was fulfilled and was true. Right. Like it. I like it. Well, to tangent off of that, and I'm going to I'm going to manifest that for GB too. I'm gonna yeah, right. I think we put I think we just put that in the air. <laughs> GB getting a promotion. He going president. He going, he yeah, going, I'm like that, bro. I'm like that right he's now. He's going president. I like From it. sub to teacher of the year, my boys. Be going I'm president. <laughs> the first one in history. <laughs> going straight to principal in one year. These okay, I like that. You know, these things happen so that the scripture would be fulfilled. I think uh we talked a lot about that as far as um, things needing things like God's knowing. I think, you know, at the end of the day, we were all over that today. And I feel like that verse really touches on all of those things that we're talking about, you know, as far as God's knowing, um, God's power, you know, and, and even at the beginning of the text, when Jesus was telling, um, uh, I think it was Pilate, as far as um, the only reason he's able to do this is because of God's will. You know, like God is God is the one that that ultimately holds the power here. And I think it really comes down to, you know, I know why we're here is really this, the scripture here. And I think 36 was huge. You know, these things happen so that scripture will be fulfilled. And I think some, thing, some things happen in our lives so that, you know, our lives and, and our purpose and what what God is using us as tools to do here ultimately has to happen for us so so certain things can be fulfilled for his greater good um i do believe that you know but i just wanted to say that and what's the only the way, way we know I... for a fact that it, that scripture fulfills those things what's the only way that we can know that that scripture it's fulfilled in scripture i think we gotta read it right my man we gotta <laughs> read the scripture dog you have discernment right because what i i'm saying what um what anybody says right if you just take it as truth, that's no bueno, right? We have to know scripture. We have to know discernment. That way we can decide what's true and what is not, and then edify each other edu and educate each other with love, right? But we, it's important. That's a, our job. It's a personal job to know what scripture says and have the discernment to understand what is true and what is not true. I just wanted to throw that in there. For, for my Bible reading folks. That's going to be the, the new intro for the Bible study YouTube videos. <laughs>
<laughs> the new intro, I swear, because that's exactly why we're here. You know, like I just I just got tired of going to church and hearing two verses and then like, oh, I'm I'm juiced up for the week. And it's like like GB was talking about, you know, like, bro, you eating leftovers like you you ain't you that's not wild eating fast food, honestly, because you are you're not really reading the scripture and you're asking God for for all these answers and how can I hear God and how am I supposed to know this and that, bro, you, you, you eating, you eating out the trash can, my dude, you, you, you reading two verses a weekend and calling yourself a Christian. I just, you know, I just think that's empty. So I just, I, I just for you, Lorenzo, the real reason we had created this in the first place was because of that concept. Like I really needed a, a place where I could just sit down and literally read the text and Hey, I, I've been progressing, you know, I'm, I'm new to this, honestly, but I've been studying the word and it, it, it's paying off. So I like that, Alec. Yeah. All right. The burial of Jesus. Later, Joseph, Joseph of Arimathy um, uh, as Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now, Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jews leaders with Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. He was accom accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of mirth and olives, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' Jesus's body, the two of them wrapped it with the species, with the sp spices, spices. In, in strips of linen. This was in accordance with Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. First, okay, first, I want to say, I ain't never heard nobody pronounce spices like that. But that's, that, that, that's, that's behind <laughs> species. species. That's, species. Species. But that's way behind us. Yeah. Hey, hey, I'm sorry. I'm exhausted. Oh. Hello. You wild right was, now, man. I species. Seeing, I was seeing different letters, bro. <laughs> I read too much. Sorry, God knew you were gonna pronounce it like that, bro. You're forgiven, man. That's good. Yeah, Sorry. you were like that. <laughs> Don't worry. Everyone knows you're a very smart person, so it's okay if you trip up. Literally, bro. But what I was gonna say, um, I think it's crazy, I, and that kind of like, just to back up. I think, um, Jace was making a point earlier about um Pilot maybe being like a, a, a like a, maybe a decent person, even though he made this terrible, great mistake. When I think about how he just like gave the body over to them. Um, and like just reading, reading that was like, okay, like, I feel like that's, that's even more of like a, like the fact that he like had some guilt about it, you know what I'm saying? So I, I feel like that was just like, just to add to that point about pilot, you know, as a person, you know? Yeah. And I think, and I think Bryn, you were really, really scratching that guilt concept. And I, I didn't want to, I didn't, I didn't want to ignore that. You know, I was following you the whole way. I feel like guilt is a true sign of choice, you know, and discernment. I feel like that is that, you know, I, I if you want to elaborate on that concept, you were really trying to get a, get a, get out earlier as far as these people are having guilt for their choices, which is ultimately where you were trying to come from, huh? Well, you, it, God is equally merciful as he is just. Now, in order to be just, he has to give people punishments for their sins, and we are punished for our sins, even the sins that bring about prophecy. If we are punished for those, that means that we must have actually had some will in doing those bad things. It's like if yeah. if God punished Adam and Eve despite knowing, okay, it's, he doesn't necessarily say that he knew that they would sin, but he did know that they would sin. Yeah. Or, or he knew that Judas would do such and such a thing and you know if he punishes judas it would be unjust for him to punish judas if judas had no choice and god is not unjust god is just and it would also be it, it would make no sense for judas to feel like he had done something wrong to have that guilt yeah because that is you know someone who has guilt feels like they deserve to be punished so Judas felt like he deserved to be punished for what he did. And it wouldn't make any sense for him to have that emotion because God puts those emotions in us. So if, you, if he didn't believe he deserved justice. Yeah. Do you feel like guilt is a true is, is a part of a sign that of the Holy Spirit? 
I think there's different types of guilt. I think that we can have a sort of false guilt that is not true. And, you know, I think that people that have repented but still feel a certain type of guilt that, oh, I'm not good enough, is, I don't think that's right. But there is righteous guilt. There's guilt that is just because we know we've done wrong and we want to do different and we want to do better. That sense of shame is a good thing to have because we, right. we should feel shame about sin and about bad things. We right. should feel like we deserve punishment. Right. Um, and we need to change. And then obviously, luckily, we, we can repent. And, and, feel like, and, do you, and do you feel like the closer you are in your connectivity towards, uh, you know, Jesus, God, the word, do you feel like that, 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 that guilt radar almost? I'm kind of dumbing this down just to make sense in my head. But do you feel like that guilt radar is more sensitive when you're oh, closer yeah. to God than when you're further from God? Because I feel like that, that guilt yeah. concept that you're hitting there. Um, I know Alec really was uh, kind of teaching me about that earlier in some of the studies as far as the Holy Spirit. Like, that's the Holy yeah. Spirit. Do you feel like yeah. that's connected? Because I Well, yes. Yeah. You'll know a man by their fruits. That just shows you what's in their heart. What's in their heart starts to come out. And if you're a person that in your heart you you are closer to God, then when you do something against God, you feel worse. It's like when you're married and you don't love your wife, you don't mind going and drinking with the buddies, coming back and like beating her and stuff. You don't feel as bad about that. Yeah. But then when you love your wife, you feel terrible about doing things that that harm her. Yeah. And so if you're closer to God, you're going to want to please him. Yeah. But even at the even at the minor, the mi like those are like we, we're definitely talking about the, the the extremes of sin. But even at the minor sins, as far as doing right and wrong in our in our little habits, you know, like, Absolutely. like that. But also something that uh, I think we talked about earlier in some of our, our Bible studies is that that Holy Spirit, that discernment, that guilt feeling. Right. We, we have come, a lot of us, I don't, I don't want to speak for you guys, but I feel like I've come to terms that the closer I am with the word, the closer I am with my, my personal relationship with God, even outside of the Bible studies, the, the stronger that ability is. And I know Alec hits home a lot where saying that's actually like a superpower to have that. But mm -hmm. the further I was away from that, the, the, I think Jeremy was kind of trying to tiptoe around this a couple studies ago, as far as that sensitivity to that is definitely diminished. But one thing that I had to learn the hard way is that even though my connectivity increases because of my understanding of God's word and what sin is and, and the repercussions to that, because people don't know God's word, because people um, aren't connected, that doesn't make them safe from God's character. And I just wanted to put that out there, you know, like in a in a world that lives in the world who has no relationship with God, who doesn't know his his character, who doesn't know the, the scripture that doesn't make them safe from God's character and his impact that will will play and unfold in their lives when they keep choosing sin. But they may not have that discernment or they may not have that Holy Spirit because God because they don't know God and God doesn't know them. And mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys are following, but I. That's just, I agree. You know, because I always felt like I was safe, you know. Oh, I'm not going to get to know God because it's easier, but it's actually harder because I'm facing the same repercussions. I just I, I'm not even I'm, I'm not even I don't even have the ability to become aware of it. It's like it's, it's, I don't know. You know, I, I'm going to pray for them. But, you know, I it, it's better on this side, you know, <laughs> not like I agree with you. God does know them. I wanted to say on that point, he said he definitely does know them. Also, I wanted to say, um, dang, I lost it, bro. We were talking about, um, dang, bro. We were just talking about it. I just literally lost it. Somebody else, go. I'm sorry. Well, so, before, yeah. I don't know if we're going to move on to the next chapter, but um, something that's cool about uh, what Jesus got wrapped in, something you guys can look up, it's called the Shroud of, Tur of Turden. If you look it up on YouTube, they actually found the the garment that Jesus was wrapped in and his blood is on it. And you could actually kind of see like his facial features and things like that. Um, so that's just something I know last week, me, GB and Malik were talking about kind of, Hey, if somebody is challenging our faith of why we believe that's something that you can like, that's hard to deny, right? Like right. When you, if you, if you watch that YouTube video, it's like, 
DNA evidence that Jesus was lived, was crucified, and was resurrected. So I think that's uh, that's not something I knew about up until like three weeks ago or so. I I learned that in one of my classes, um, and it just it blew my mind. If you go watch a couple of YouTube videos on that, it's called the Shroud of Turin or Turin. Um, Turn it in the chat. Cause I need some yeah. more, I need some more tools for my toolkit. Cause all I'm telling them is, why do you not? And then they say, oh, because that's why I'm gonna pray for you, bro. Like, be right, safe. Right. Like, but I need something for my toolkit because it's empty. Yeah, you need something to put them out. Yeah, something to get them. Put them out. Yeah, I'll throw a couple of YouTube videos in our in our group chat. Um, it's worth it's worth it. It's super it's super cool, man. Too, especially as believers watching that. Like, it's like, it's like it, to me, it was very encouraging. It filled my heart with joy. Yeah. Watch, watching that and just seeing seeing that god is you know getting proved with science how cool is yeah. that yeah right i just remembered also what i was gonna say so i was going to your first to the point we were just making about um kind of being closer to god and having you know him that radar uh, you know another part of that radar is also just like just plain knowledge of um you know just plain knowledge in the bible and knowing what is sin and what is not sin you know, because I know I found out a, a couple things were sin that I didn't know, you know, the more I kind of harmless things, right? And, you know, but you, things you might not even feel are wrong. So, I, you know, I definitely feel like just kind of knowing that extra knowledge um, <clears throat> can, can can be helpful. But in the last thing, and the last thing I want to say, I know you're about to wrap up. This was part of that, uh, the teacher of the year thing that we were just talking about. But I, I wanted to say, man, um, one t- well, I forgot, somebody told me, some, one of the teachers like, oh my God, like, man, we love having here, whatever, whatever. And I wanted to say, man, you know, even in situations that aren't ideal, bro, like, I feel like it's always important to be a light, you know, kind of wherever you are, you, um, you know, and the school I'm at could be considered a dark place sometimes, you know, kind of what people, what the, the um, community is going through and um, the kids I work with and stuff. So, bro, like, it's a, it's a blessing to hear that you're like you know so i know it's even more blessing for them to feel like you're your presence around them all the time you know so i definitely you know if you don't want to be somewhere bro like if you like dang i gotta go work here this for these two years or whatever bro like that's the lord's will and since it's the lord's will man be a light there man and you know um try to spread it and try to just you know show your life show it through your life bro so yeah, I like that. I'm looking at the Shroud. Of um, there's a YouTube video that has a recreation of Jesus's face by using the imprint. And does anyone know about the the painting by um, a cane of Jesus, the little girl that had the vision, and then she painted what she saw, and it was Jesus's face. Probably cool. He, uh, they're like an article or or a video. Well, I, I can I can send the name of the artist and the painting. It's called Prince of Peace by a cane. Supposedly she had this vision, and I think she was eight years old, and then she drew this lifelike image of Jesus or painted this lifelike image of Jesus that was kind of a really big deal for a while. And I'm looking at the comparison between the two, and there's like a lot of similarities, which is interesting. So the nose is the same. They have the same uh, nose on the on the thing. And then also the way the beard goes underneath the cheekbones is the same. Um, the eyebrows are a little bit different, and the eyes are different colors. Um, but the nose is exactly the same. So I just found that interesting that you gotta there's similarities that. between the two images. You got to send that. You got to send that. D, what up, man? What you been on today, bro? You hear something? What was something. going down today, man? You was hearing something? Eating My bad. Eating. Eating. <laughs> it was really that. It was really that. Um, outside, inside. <laughs> yeah, I was doing everything. It was really that um, election versus election versus free will concept, kind of like we were talking about um, in Nicaragua. You had that kind um, of- mm-hmm. But no, y'all were hitting on a lot of gems. That was a fire session. Sure, bro. It was good to see you back, man. Yeah, yeah, I was slacking for a couple weeks. That's all good, bro. And uh Lorenzo, man, I, I really, I really wanted to say, man, I appreciated your time here, dude. You're huge. Oh. 
You're huge. I really Thanks for the invite. Bro, and anytime, hanging out today, man. man. That's why you join. Anytime, man. Jace, what up, man? <laughs> it's good to see you good back. To be back, man. It's so good to be back in here. I swear, we'll uh we'll touch base here shortly, uh, in town. So that'll be good too. For sure, bro. But, but I really, I really want to say, man, I I, I missed y'all lately. It's been good. It was a great session tonight to have everybody in here. So I appreciate y'all. Oh, I did want to mention that uh my little my prayer session this week was fire. So I'm gonna take that up a little bit more this week. Um, and just to be, you know, blatantly open with you guys, uh, some of the things I went to them about um was really because I, I had some laundry, right? That I was I had tucked under my head. <laughs> okay. So I was just like, all right, I know I need to get this laundry, but then it literally struck a conversation through prayer as far as like, um, God already see the laundry under my bed, right? Even though I'm trying to hide it from myself. And I, I y'all probably see where I'm going with this, but I literally took up that conversation with myself as far as like, I'm constantly trying to hide myself from God under my bed. Like he don't already know what's under my bed. Exactly. So I went to him with prayer about it as far as, hey God, let's just take a look at what's under my bed today. All right. Here's here's what I'm feeling. Here's what I'm thinking. And as I'm saying this, it's kind of like it's, I don't I don't want to say the prayer was pointless because it was very beneficial. But it was like, bro, I already know, you know, like I already know. I think he was just waiting for me to realize that, like, you can't hide this from me, even if you try. So getting it, giving it to him, it, it was I had a great week. It was very freeing. So I'm going to try that out some more this week, man. I appreciate you. Appreciate you, bro. Heck, yeah. I commend you for that, Posting man. This, man. Here without season, brother. What's that? Muted. Um, he muted. Happy to see Darius is out the pen. Enjoying <laughs> <the video. laughs> in a couple of weeks. Fresh out, man. Fresh out. Yeah. Fresh day out. First day back. <laughs> back. Yeah. We got him back. I like Happy. it. But yeah, but yeah, let's have a good week, fellas. Peace. I'm gonna see you some happy. Right. How you doing, boys? Right, <laughs> yeah, let's <laughs> go.